Hey everybody, so I'm over at my mom's house today. I'm gonna replace, be replacing these two uh, washer water valves. This house is built in the 70s, so it doesn't have one of those recessed boxes. So we're gonna be replacing them with these things. These are a uh, Dahl brand. I'll try and leave a link in the description if I can find them. They're a quarter turn bowl valves. So all we need to do, we'll get this washing machine out of the way, pull it out. Um, we'll unhook those two hoses. We'll use a torch. We'll unsweat those valves, yank them off, clean them off and sweat these new valves on. I've already shut the water off to the house. Um, one little tip, if your shutoff valve outside is one of those gate valves that you have to turn a thousand times like this and doesn't shut off all the way, just open a hose bib nearby and it'll let any water leaks by the valve out the hose bib so it doesn't mess with your soldering here. So let me get the washing machine moved out of the way. Also generally a good idea to have a bucket of water with some rags before you shut the water off to the house. Okay, got my trusty map gas torch old pair of uh, channel lock pliers. Let's go yank these valves off. Do my best to not mess up the paint on the wall. Actually, you know what? Uh, well, let's, let's give it a shot. Might have to take that valve apart if there's a lot of water backed up in there. Hopefully you guys can see. This can sometimes take a while. Here's some steam. Once that steam stops, then the solder should start to melt. Oh, I think it's already starting. There we go. One valve. Again, try not to, not to mess up the paint here. Try not to block your view, too. Or get burnt by steam <laughs> as the water drips out. There we go. And that's what everything looks like after taking off the valves. So what we need to do now is I'm gonna heat this up again. I'm gonna wipe off some of that excess solder with a rag. I'll lower the heat a little bit, get one of our rags. This helps get the extra solder off the pipe. Just need to do this a few times. Okay, that should be good. We'll do the other one. You can see the solder on the rag there, the little shiny bits. Easy way to tell if you got enough solder off is to put the valve on. It should slide right on. If it doesn't, so this one's good. If it doesn't slide right on, then you might need to do that heat and wipe thing again. So should be good here. Next step is to clean the pipe. I use one of these little pipe cleaners. You can get these at Home Center or Amazon. I'll try to leave you the link. Pipe should be nice and shiny. Now we'll take some flux and we'll put that on the pipe. 
I like to use a uh, Harris Stay Bright Number Eight, and I use this Stay Clean Flux. Again, link in the description. It's expensive stuff, but it's really good. Pretty sure this stuff is even rated for HVAC work. Just put it generously on the exposed clean copper. Now we gotta clean our valves. We'll use the other end of the brush here. We'll clean it just like that. Put some flux in there. We'll stick that on the cold side. Just like so. And we'll clean the hot valve the same way. This is really key. If you don't do this prep work correctly, not going to have a good time. So just make sure you spend the time, clean everything, flux everything properly, and then everything else should be smooth sailing from there. Make sure your valves are open when you're soldering. Otherwise, what can happen is water in the line will boil, cause steam, and then it'll blow the solder out from time to time. And here is our Stay Bright number eight right here. Again, link in the description. This stuff is expensive, like I said, but if you just do occasional plumbing work. This can be used on just about everything. And this one, this one thing like this, that this size, I think it's an eighth of a pound, should last you pretty much your entire plumbing career unless you're a pro. So now I'm gonna get in there with a torch. If you haven't done soldering before, I'd recommend wrapping the valves with some, uh, with some, uh, with a moist, uh, moist towel just to prevent from overheating them. If you've done this a thousand times, you're probably not watching this video, um, but I'll show you how I do it without wrapping the valves. Never had a problem. I'm gonna try to stay out of your way. Trick is to get in and get out quickly. Lower the heat down a little bit. So I'm heating the bottom. I'm tapping the solder on the top here. See it just get sucked in. There we go, that one's done. What I'll do is I'll cool the valve itself, not the joint, just like this. Get some of the heat out of there. Don't want to get too close to the joint, you don't want it to crack. And just cool the valve off. And you do not want to operate these valves while they're hot. Got to wait for it to cool off. We'll do the other one the same way. This one's probably difficult for you guys to see, so I apologize in advance if my body's in the way, but this is what we're dealing with here. Actually, let me see if I can move you over just a tad. Same deal, I'm just gonna cool this valve off, valve itself.
while those valves are cooling off, let's talk a little bit about the old ones, right? So these are called, I think they're called the globe valves, right? And so what happens is you turn this and there's a little washer inside that gets really rock hard over time. And that's used to seal um, against where the water comes in. What happens, that washer becomes, like I said, rock hard, it'll break, it'll crack, it'll leak. Sometimes you'll also see, like this one here, it was leaking around the valve, uh, the valve stem. There's a packing in there. You can see all this crud built up over the years. So this one was leaking very slightly around there too. These are just an inferior design. They're very cheap, but, you know, they're far inferior to ball valves, quarter turn ball valves, which is what we installed today. Okay, everything is now cool enough for me to hold my hand on. We'll shut the valves off, then we'll go turn the water back onto the house. Now, what I like to do here, just to, until I know that there's no leaks, I'll turn the water on just a little bit so that there's not a lot of flow, but the pressure will be the same as whether it's on full blast or not. So let me go turn uh, the water onto the house just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, the water is on. I don't see any leaks. What I usually do now is I'll open the valve to get some water, just to flush out the lines. There's the hot. Do the same thing on the cold side. There we go. And obviously clean up the water on the wall. It's sprayed everywhere. That's it, folks. Pretty easy. Um, I think this video may actually be fast enough to qualify as a short. Anyway, if you found this video, um, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and I'll put links to all this stuff in the description if anybody wants, anybody wants to try this themselves.